I like I always pay attention. What are you talking about? Every time. At, oh shit! Hey, football's tonight. Are you excited, Sean? I'm just staring at Rob now. I have the same face Rob has because. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome there's, to the podcast. There's a timer right there. Uh, right. I, I saw it. I'm just fucking uh, with you guys. Oh, well, we yeah. don't. We're not always sure. <laughs> no, I, I I knew it was. It's just not good. It's it's very lame trolling. Rob, how's your coffee? Oh, it's delicious. Oh yeah, we got to start Thanks with to we got to start wife. with an apology to my wife. For, Man, uh, completely. No, you, you have to. I didn't. We do should. Anything. We should. Yeah, we, not we, me either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kristen did get coffee last week. It was just in her car the whole time. So. Yes. Sorry, Kristen. So, Rob, I think you should apologize because you I'm were the one that wanted it. You and without have... your anger, I would have never thrown my wife under the bus. <laughs> well, Steve so. can never be a wholly responsible for any of his actions. <laughs> right, right. I can get her up here and she can uh, rant about all the shit that I do wrong. You want to do that? She just We don't have we, enough time. Dude, she, uh, she, uh, she just won't. Like, she just walked Rob in. Don't know. I, can, I can hear her down there. <laughs> Used to wear Rob's underwear when we lived together. Used like, to. Well, let's start there. I still got some. <laughs> what are you talking about? Used to. I still got wow. some. You can't fit those things anymore. Get the I, fuck I, out I of got here. my dad's socks. Rob's underwear. <laughs> my wife's bras. <laughs> that's how you've been. That's how you've been taming them titties. I know <laughs> I the secret now. Them. I like the push-up bra the best. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, so. yeah. The Matrix, dude. Come on. Like, let's start. Let's start right there. All right. Matrix Resurrections trailer hit uh, earlier today. Full trailer today. A uh, little teaser thing came out a couple of days ago that was really cool that would update every minute with new footage. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty crazy. Was uh, awesome. Full trailer dropped today. Almost three-minute trailer. Uh I mean, just overall first impressions. I'm very excited. Yeah, I uh, I just jerked off for the eighth time after watching it for the 80th time. So I'm super excited as well. Rob, what are you thinking? Um, I think it looks good. I was a little hesitant at first because they haven't dropped anything. And it, yeah. it looks like it's going to be a good story. Yeah, that's it's... what I was worried about. I was like, wh- where are they going to put them? And that's what I'm hoping for too. So. I, the action looks great, but like you want the story to go along with it too. Yeah. So I mean, you see a lot of tie-ins to the other movies, you know. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I but, I, uh, I like I, that I don't really know what's going on in the trailer. Yeah. I appreciate I, that. Um, it just it looks it it's the Matrix. It looks like the Matrix. Uh, as we've t- talked about before, we we liked all three movies. A lot of people hated the second and or third one. Uh. I enjoyed all three a lot yeah. immensely watched them many, many times. So I'm excited to have more matrix. I'm glad at least one of the Wachowskis is involved. Um, so it, I'm, so I don't really know. So the Wachowskis have always been real secretive. Um, so I don't know like what Lana and Lily each actually bring to a movie, you know, cause, cause they're different people. So, you know, one might focus on the more cerebral stuff. One might focus on the action. Uh, Captain Obvious. But, well, no, I'm just saying that because well, they're directed by the Wachowskis, but we don't know, like, I know, I know what you're what. saying. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know who's who's bringing what to the table. Like, but they were. No, I, I know your point. It just cracked me up that you said they're two different people. They, well, <laughs> that, that's all. But I know what you're they saying. Take they have different credit. personalities. It's like the Russo brothers. Yeah. Like the, same with the Russo brothers. We don't right. know who's contributing what. Um, and so my, but at my least point being, like my point you, being that after like Cloud Atlas and that other one that I couldn't even try to watch, Jupiter Ascending, <laughs> I'm, by basically what I'm saying is like, whose fault? were those movies maybe we'll find out if, was it lana's fault or maybe it was more lily's fault if this one rocks it was definitely lily <laughs> right right we can throw that blame at, at lily's feet at that point um so yeah there's just there's a little bit of that in there like sean like, was saying though they're very secretive like they would never give interviews man i barely have i maybe got five minutes of, of them on footage on all my bonus dvds you know yeah so, so that's yeah, so like I said, I don't I don't know who brings what to the table, but judging from this trailer, action seems to be paramount and which is good because that's, you know, I feel like the the Matrix is like three 
primary ingredients, which is uh, martial arts, gunfights, and then like philosophy slash religion. Like I like the the interplay of all three of those things. And it, even though they didn't go deep into any kind of philosophy type stuff, there's clearly some settings, you know, he's talking to a psychiatrist. He later, he's talking to some other white dude. I don't, I don't know who that guy was, but like, they're clearly going to get back into that stuff too, which very yeah. much intrigues me. Like, yeah, I mean, it has, it has me excited. And I'm glad they didn't expose a lot. We don't know who these characters are. Um, oh, I'm yeah. so fucking yeah, there, pumped. There could be a lot of misdirection the way they cut it. So, you just right. don't know. And a, I think a lot of what they showed were, were flat. I mean, some of it was literally flashbacks to the other movies. And then we we don't know when this takes place. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? We we don't know anything. Right. I'm hoping it's after post machine. Well, I mean, it, right. from watching it a couple times, it looks like I don't know if this is like Morpheus resurrected, if it's like yeah, a different uh, iteration, different, a different character altogether. Yeah, and right. they're just—I mean, you don't know. And then they—they <laughs> they show that one one lady. It looks like the Oracle with the glasses. Mm. And then that guy sitting down could be a you know a different architect. Yeah, you know. But I mean, who knows? Who I knows? Mean, who yeah. know? All that I, is valid. I, I have no know idea. And if right. it's the and if it's because, the same Neo and Trinity, it, do they still have the same memories? Because they hinted at that. You know, they talked about you know when like the architect was talking in the second movie or the third, the second, yeah, yeah, about you know reincarnation and basically you know you get reset and it's right. like I don't know if you reinserted. So it's like reincarnation. You know, do the does this just who knows, man. I don't know. Yeah, did Neo not get re? You know, how is he still alive? Because he's different. I mean, who freak? Who knows? Uh, they yeah. obviously put him back in, or somebody, or he put himself in. Or it appears that way. Sir, Wait, it appears like know. the machines did. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know. Um, they left it wide open but here's at the, the end thing. of Revolutions by dude, saying we'll Trinity see. looks great. Yeah, dude. Wow. Oh my god, she looks wonderful. When she started waking up from the Matrix, I got fucking goosebumps, man. I was she like, this good. is awesome she looks like trinity is back you know neo's happy about that you know in those (laughs) marvel movies i don't i guess they just made her they didn't make her very attractive in those in the (laughs) she was in um one of those marvel tv shows that was on netflix huh daredevil jessica jones daredevil oh jessica Jessica jones Jones. Yeah. yeah that's right and I was like man how is she gonna play trinity man i'll tell you what from the trailer it's like holy cow Rob just took us back about 300 years. So <laughs> very progressive. Well, I'm just, modern women. How I'm good do they saying, look? <laughs> what is she's, true value? Come on, man. She's like they made, a, they made her look. Value she's like 50. The Matrix trilogy. <laughs> what That's that? what I'm saying. She looks fantastic. She looks as young as she did when she did it 20 years ago. Uh, oh, That's what I'm saying. Uh. I thought she Dude, looked good. Come on, she job. wore tight leather pants. I mean, <laughs> wait, are you saying there's some CGI help there? No, no, I'm not. Some I'm not help. saying that at all. <laughs> Thanks, so, caveman Rob. I'm just, I'm just saying how great. <laughs> I was like, and, booga, booga titties. Does this make you? Does this make you feel better? Canoe Reeves always looks Keanu. fantastic. Canoe, Canoe Reeves, whatever his name is. Very oh, yeah, attractive that's, man as well. That's sexist. Now you're saying only guys age well. Anyway, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to dig he did us not out of this look good in, <laughs> Just, in the um in that uh Rob, save yourself quick. <laughs> Let's hear your thoughts on the Texas Bill abortion ban. Come on, dig yourself out of this. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to stick with that? the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> uh well the justice No, 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 no. Fuck abortion. Uh is is gonna sue Texas. What's that, so Steve? You're you're anti abortion? Oh shit. Hearing? Now I'm with now I'm with Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck women's rights. So th- there's good news on Look that. Look better when you're older. <laughs> and then I, I read an article. I want to talk about the Matrix. What are we doing? And then I read an article the, uh, this week about a. Uh, there was a bar. Uh, oh, I think it was Harvard. All right. Forget it. I'll stop. Go. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm done. We finally got Rob involved, and you're like, shut up, Rob. Let's I'm speculate good. about a let's, three minute let's, trailer. Let's, let's talk about the. Yeah, let's talk about that for another 60 minutes. <laughs> I uh cuz that affects your life. I'm uh super stoked to see Neo finding Trinity again. 
Like that's my favorite part of, of this trailer. The action, yes. Fuck you, How do you fantastic. know Trinity doesn't find Neo? Sexist. I don't know. Could be. But uh, just assume the man has to find the woman. I, I assume the main I can, protagonist I can, I can is back to once you. again the main protagonist. I'm just assuming things. But yeah, I, I, his love for her, I think, is what is is driving this movie again, which is was always my favorite part of the first one. And then the your action favorite, is that was off. Your favorite part. That yes. was your favorite part. It wasn't yes, the martial dude. art. No, it was Shut the favorite the part. I don't believe that for a second. He oh. should not walk out of that theater talking about. Dude, I was. That in- romance was amazing. That, I was with you when you saw it the first time. You didn't mention the romance a single time. Those. All you that, did was talk about the martial arts. <laughs> listen, those what two were the did pinnacle. We fast forward to the martial arts scenes. We didn't fast forward to the kissy kissy stuff. Listen. <laughs> Is this my is this my yeah. reaction? Yeah, of course the action was awesome, but the best yeah. part of it was was her and him. That's, that was the favorite part since, at the end, dude. This is yes. this is new. This is no. I don't I don't think that's right. Okay, I'm going to say fuck off and this is my iteration of the Matrix, all right? This is Steve's iteration. But you're lying. You're I'm lying. Not, I'm calling you a liar. Dude, you're, when, you're lying. Dude, at no point when we that, talked about the Matrix, did you sit there and start talking about he loved her so much? Okay, man. come you know, on, we were dude. We're talking about the fight scenes. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that's what we talked about. Maybe not originally in '99, <laughs> but overall, that has been what I have enjoyed the most. Their yeah, relationship I'm on that. Okay. that has never entered it. We've that, Steve and I've talked about the Matrix. Matrix possibly more than the fucking Wachowskis themselves. <laughs> this is the first day he has ever mentioned the the romance angle. In the that, movie, I just want to point that out. Listen, I so. don't, I don't always talk to you about everything. Some of my feelings I keep to myself. So we talk about the Matrix for hours, and you don't mention your favorite hey, part. You your know what? You know what I don't talk. About? You know what I don't talk to you about musicals because you'll just laugh at me. Okay, there's lots of things I don't talk to you about because I know I'll but go why nowhere would you leave with your it. favorite part of the movie out. Listen. Listen. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I don't, I don't actually, follow this. Actually, my favorite part is when. Uh, you want to Morpheus, when you Morpheus want to takes takes the katana out and slices the tires. See, the... there you go. I've <laughs> yeah. heard you say that before. You brought but, that up. I believe yeah. that. But that's believable. That's one of my favorite parts. But I have yes. many. I have many and favorite parts. Out, and this last, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this See, last I part, I don't get that reaction with the romance stuff. What you okay. just did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do that when we talk yeah. about the romance well, this, thing. That's why I'm telling you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and her <laughs> getting back together. Can't wait. <laughs> I fucking, story. I fucking cry when he when she died. I fucking cry when she saved him with the helicopter. I get those parts too, but they're they're yeah. not my favorite parts. Like, okay, oh, that's my definitely parts, my favorite part. One of my favorite parts is when Neo is blind. And he's fighting the the uh, I have many the real world parts. version of Agent Smith, and he's like, you know, with with your dull cow eyes, and he's like, I <laughs> see you, and he fucking just fucks him up, and he's like, how? <laughs> like that's my favorite shit. That's I another. dig the romance stuff. I can be a little schmaltzy. It is absolutely not my favorite part. There's a reason that the climax of the movie is not that just them fucking until they die. It's because we're there for the martial arts, and it's him fighting motherfucking Smith. For yeah. like 20 minutes. Yeah, those are That's good parts. Those that. are those are favorite parts as it well. It's very many, strange that and, today, and many, today, many favorite all parts. Days, you're like, my favorite part of the Matrix is when he hugs Trinity and tells oh, her. So, like, the, beauty <laughs> of, the beauty of the Matrix is learning something new every time you watch it. So my favorite, favorite part is yeah, this, him getting back with her. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So Steve okay. is lying. I just need okay. everyone to know that. I don't and know why also, you need to tell this lie, but this this is not okay. true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> also, one of my favorite scenes is you know when when he saves her in the helicopter. Fucking Mor- <laughs> Morpheus already knows it because he's like you know he's a trumper. He's blind faith guy. You know, fucking yeah. Trinity is like. Dude, this is the man I love. I gotta fucking get this guy. And then Neo is starting to fucking he'd be like, maybe I am the one. And it all culminates in that fucking scene where the helicopter hits the building. All right, that's my favorite part. Yeah. And then we, I know and then right <laughs> at, right after that is the love between him and her. Rob's just nodding quietly in the background because he knows full well. You're <laughs> Steve. Steve has never brought up the 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 love angle. I don't tell you all just, the things about me. Okay, some things I keep secret. I say you're for, fairly shallow. You keep it all at the surface. That's, I, I can that's tell. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I have many many dark things I keep inside. Okay. 
I finally, like a, now that it's 2021, I feel that's okay to express my true feelings. Oh, okay. How about anyway. some of that action? <laughs> oh, the action looks fucking great, dude. All right, so yeah, check out the Matrix trailer. It looks amazing. I can't wait to see it. I am like super fucking pumped. But we should change topics now, Steve. What? I thought this (laughs) was going to be all about the Matrix trailer. It's a trailer. There's always so much we can do here. You just want to speculate about a trailer? Yeah. We have no information on. Yeah. It look. It looks like a Matrix movie. I'm excited. Rob wore his green shirt today. He's so excited. Yeah. Like (laughs) he blends right into the background there. Uh, All right. What do you What do you want to talk about? Um. Yeah. Are we Are we going to get into politics? Rob seemed to light up when we. <laughs> no, don't you don't want to do politics. <laughs> you don't want to do politics. Go ahead. Uh. What do you got now? What we got? You got fucking Afghan thoughts? What What do you do? I have no thoughts. I've given my thoughts on get on Afghanistan. I'm more concerned about our, you know, uh, half of the United States population known as, known as women. <laughs> and how other rights are being encroached upon. I guess Biden just today, though, gave a speech. I haven't watched it. Maggie told me about it, where he basically, and, and this is a total paraphrase, he basically made a speech saying, hey, since all you stupid motherfuckers won't get vaccinated, I got to issue a motherfucking mandate. Yeah. Any business that employs more than 100 people has got to get people vaccinated or they have to take tests. Or oh, he did do a mandate, huh? And immediately, of course, you get the Trumpers, the idiots who are like, you're taking my freedom away. And it's like, no, you have choices. You can get vaccinated. You can not get vaccinated and take a test or you can quit your fucking job. Over women in Texas do not have a choice. So that's what a lack of freedom looks like. Look at the abortion laws in Texas. If you want to know what a lack of freedom looks like. Uh, but yeah, being an asshole. Dude. So are you guys familiar with the Herman Cain award Reddit? Yes. No. Okay. But Rob, Rob looks a little dumbfounded. You, you you know if it's Reddit and TikTok, I don't know. All right, so I'll just kind of sum up here. You'll get so you know who Herman Cain is. Obviously, do you you remember he died of COVID about yes. a week after saying don't wear masks, and he yes. went to like a basketball game or something, and then he died. And so now there's a whole Reddit, a subreddit <laughs> dedicated to what they call the Herman Cain Awards, where people are combing through social media feeds and finding these Trumpers and and finding these idiots, these anti vaxxers and gathering all their anti-vaxxer posts and how they're calling everyone sheep and they're killing themselves and they're all these posts and then the, the eventually the, it's a post where it's like he's dead i feel really sick pray for me and then there's the next post is usually almost always like a friend or family member being like carl went to heaven today on the yeah. wings of covid19 uh thank you for your prayers the lord called him home and it's just like and it's there's just tons of them it's just it's happening more and more frequently and these are the same people who are like dude you just believe everything you read and you won't open your eyes and meanwhile they're they are fully fucking blue pilled into believing that 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 this is they need to take horse paste that's what i wanted to talk about oh i thought that was a transition back into the matrix trailer no joe rogan joe rogan so joe rogan gets covid before you get started i gotta bring it up who do you hate more, Joe Rogan or uh, Abrams, J.J. Abrams? <laughs> oh, J.J. Abrams. J.J. Oh, Abrams, for man. sure. I, yeah. thought, I thought Joe would. No, because well, here's the thing. Abrams, Abrams personally affects his life. Yes. Joe Joe Rogan. Here's the thing. I actually like Joe Rogan. And I know this is going to sound like I hate Joe Rogan. And I do hate a lot about Joe Rogan. But I like his stand-up specials. I think he's very funny. And I, I have, in the past... Uh, when I was listening to podcasts, when I had to like go to a job and I would listen to podcasts, I would listen when he would have comedians on like Bill Burr and Hannibal Burris and, and people like that, Mark Marin and whoever, uh, just comedians I liked. Um, but whenever he would get, you know, any sort of like truther or even, you know, just somebody new, you know, uh, just even scientists and stuff where he's like, whoa, the universe is so big, dude. I was just like, I didn't have any interest in that. I went through that phase in my 20s. It's very juvenile to act like that's somehow expanding your mind because you're talking to somebody about, you know, MDMA or whatever uh, the fuck. And, um, but anyway, but I do, like I said, I think he's very funny in his specials. However, what I've seen him um, most recently from like a month ago, he was talking to a doctor, a female doctor, which I think matters because I just felt like he kind of was real condescending with her. Um, uh, And she's explaining, you know, they're talking about COVID 
and he's coming back with all this fucking bullshit. So ba- basically, I'll just sum up and say that he has always kind of taken a stance on COVID that he'll be okay because he works out a lot and his immune system is fucking ripped, as shredded as he is, right? Mm-hmm. And he doesn't have any comorbidities. He was talking about like how the average person has four comorbidities when they have if they die of COVID and this and that. Flash forward, fast forward to him getting COVID, making a post where he on Instagram, and I think I screenshotted uh, something he said here because I just was like this fucking idiot. Um, God, there goes one of my fucking earbud. <laughs> you weren't even moving giant this ear hole. You, you it's right in the right one. It's usually my left ear hole. My my right ear hole is expanding now. Totally fuckable now. Um, it's a, get some headphones. Dude, Your I nose and ears smart. never stop growing. You know that? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's absolutely true. Just, and I'm like, I'm like living. Is that proof. something you've been holding on to, or you just no, read that? Today? No, it's I thought true. Every, I thought uh, everybody Maggie knew that. Me. I didn't know that. Maggie told me that. Like, <laughs> I thought everybody knew that. That I I, I, I knew it some a few years ago. Yeah, ears knowledge. and nose are just wah, yeah, just constantly growing. It's fucked up. No shit. Um, like two. <laughs> It's like, why is it your penis constantly growing? Nope. Here's a nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. Attractive I... features on a man. Um, <laughs> it's your ears and your fucking nose. I'm surprised <laughs> it's not your toes, too. Your toes just don't get longer and longer and creepier and fucking hobbity looking. Your toes. Anyway, um, now your nails grow after you die, right? Oh, my, my toes are doing all kinds of stuff. Your fingernails and your nails. <laughs> I don't want to know. My I don't toes are know. like going in different directions now. I can... <laughs> it's got, it's it's got like hammer crazy. toes. No, nah, it's hammer not toes. a hammer toe, but. Like, like, like an eagle, one likes snatching to lean, salmon going a little upstream. to the left. <laughs> the other one goes a little bit out. <laughs> Toenails Steve. are like. <laughs> All right, we're losing hurt, listeners as you talk. <laughs> it hurts. They're dropping. <laughs> we, we lost them as soon as you said abortion. All right. So. All right. So anyway, my point being, again, just to reiterate, Joe Rogan seemed to think that his you know his super immunity due to because he works out constantly because he, he's a meathead and <sighs> the fact that it, so he would he doesn't have the comorbidities and he's in really good shape however what did he do uh uh in his treatment according to his video they post on september 1st his treatment included <laughs> quote monoclonal antibodies ivermectin z-pack prednisone everything i also got an nad drip and a vitamin drip I did that three days in a row. So this dude who's been talking mad shit about don't be afraid of the virus. Don't get vaccinated. You'll be fine if you're healthy. As soon as he gets COVID, he takes about 60 fucking treatments simultaneously. Full of shit. Full of shit. Just like everybody in like all those fucking people. They're they're fucking hypocritical. If he believed everything he said about, oh, I'm, I'll be fine. You know, if I get COVID, I'll, I have my immune system will take care of it. Instead, he fucking scrambled for the Regeneron treatment. Shit I've never even heard of. He got his horse paste, whatever. His fucking <laughs> dewormer. He did all the things after telling everybody, don't get vaccinated. Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. But I just don't see a reason to get vaccinated. And then he doesn't get vaccinated. And what it takes all the treatments, all the treatments that he could possibly think of. All of them. Steroids. Fucking like what the fuck, dude? Like that's such a dick move. You have a huge audience, and he, he always is like, Oh, nobody should listen to me. Then shut the fuck up about this stuff, then because people are listening to you and they don't have yeah. access to all those treatments because they're not exactly. rich and they're not famous and they're not famous and they can't cut the line exactly. for monoclonal antibody treatments like you can. Yeah, because I looked those up in Ohio. There's like 13 treatment centers in Ohio, and it's reserved for like something I forget exactly, like high risk people or something like it's not something you could just walk in and get if you have COVID. Yeah. When and you're going to like, unless you got money, when your audience, got the when money. your audience is that big, you definitely have a responsibility, you it's, know? Exactly. It, it, so, and of course now he's just acting like, Oh yeah, I totally beat COVID. Yeah. With 30 experimental treatments, you fucking ass fucking hole. Like what the fuck dude? I, was like, like, I, that, I heard he was just, he's like, that's what my doctor gave me. Yeah, that's like, like, yeah. Like, Wait, what doctor do you think treatment? he's going to? Right. He's going, <laughs> he's got connections. He's got, a, he's got yeah. a doctor who, who does house calls yeah. because he's fucking rich. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's, and I it's guarantee you bullshit. the stuff that he is given him is, you know, was, was Joe Rogan probably said, Hey, can I get some of this? Can I get some of this? Can I, it's like, and it's medical grade. Yeah. Uh, too. Like, I mean, he's not, it's, he has so many more options than everybody else. And he sits up there. Uh, rich and just away from everybody and then telling the common people who are fucking listening to him, oh, I don't get vaccinated. 
And they're like, yeah, Joe Rogan said that five foot three bald dude told me that I should not get vaccinated. So I listened to him. He doesn't have a complex about his height or anything. That's not why he works out. I swear to God. Like, it's like, dude, uh, like, ah, it's just, it's infuriating. And again, I like Joe Rogan. I do. I I think he's funny. I'm going to keep watching his specials. It's not like a Trump thing where I hated him his whole life. It's just, it blows my mind that he can be that stupid. Yeah, I'm the same way because li- I've probably listened to him for two years straight, you know, just while, uh, you know, while I was at work and stuff. And it is, it sucks because you, 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 he's mostly, he leans liberal a lot, you know, and it's yeah. just like, you hate to see him say something so fucking stupid, man. You know, right. it's just like, right. come on, dude. And uh Yeah. I, I haven't I'm listened sure his to listeners him. are like, oh, yeah, he was right. It's like, no, he wasn't right. He took 80 treatments at but once. You could tell he was going <laughs> that way, though. Like, that's why I started getting frustrated with him because he keep on having these fucking stupid ass guests on that were obviously frauds, you know, and it's right. just like, stop pushing this fucking bullshit, you know, and right. then and then he ended up moving to Texas. And that was like my last straw. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, I can't, he switched to Spotify and he went to Texas and I'm like, I, I, I'm good. But yeah, he, but he yeah, just... it is disappointing. Cause I really did, you know, enjoy, I, I enjoyed a lot of the guests he had on and stuff, but. See, I, I thought I knew a lot of his guests were lame. Um, and again, like these, these uh, people with a lot of uh, theories and hypotheses that have no actual impact on life itself. Um, like I remember at one point you were telling me like, he's talking to somebody about being in a simulation. And I was like, Steve, I went through this in my twenties. It doesn't matter if we're in a simulation. There's only one exit that we know of. So go try it out. If you're convinced we're in a simulation, go, go fucking cut your wrists because we like, shut up. Otherwise pay your fucking bills, do your fucking laundry, take a fucking shower. It doesn't matter. And I tried, I I tried it after being revived uh i can tell you there's nothing <laughs> on the other side it's not, it's not a simulation guys <laughs> the simulation i have the scars to prove that <laughs> but yeah a, but that, that, that whole joke. thing was just always dumb to me that uh like dude it doesn't matter if we're in a simulation nothing changes it's, <laughs> it's like flat earthers it's like yeah. stop talking about shit that doesn't matter <laughs> like it doesn't affect us who cares who fucking cares be smart enough to recognize that it doesn't matter yeah i'll tell you what does affect you covid COVID. <laughs> the right. Delta variant. Fifteen hundred people dying a day again. And dude, I just read I saw yeah. a little headline, uh something about nine thousand uh children infected yeah. in, in California now. It's a lot it's of like, kids. Dude, and, I get a text twice a week from Aiden School saying somebody's saying that the, somebody's got COVID. Mm. <sighs> fucking crazy. It's so fresh. And all of us were just like, like, I'm ready for my booster shot. I'm ready for my fucking quadruple shot. Like, I don't care. Everything I have to do to end this and the people who who claim they want this to end the most aren't taking the necessary steps to do so. They're not wearing masks. They're not getting vaccinated. They're they're every like concerts are in full fucking swing. Bands <laughs> I like are just like, fuck it. We got to make our money. You know, they're just like, and I'm, I'm not going. I'm like, no, I'm going to get fucking COVID. I know well, what metalheads look like. I thought they're checking uh, vax cards at the at the door for those. Sir, yeah, maybe for the shows you would go to, not for the shows I would go to. Huh. Like, the only thing they're doing at the shows I go to, they check for weapons. <laughs> like, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, that's what they, you get. They have metal detectors at the shows I go to. <laughs> so it's a little bit different than going to see fucking. You can die uh, three weeks later as long as you don't die at the event. <laughs> right. Or you, you don't stab somebody. You can infect somebody and kill them that right. way. Uh, but you can't. I, all can't my shows I've had someone. metal detectors. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Do you get pat downs and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Every show. I find that hard to believe. Well, so every, I, mean, I remember when I. It's always been show, big shows it? at like a Coliseum or something like that. Oh, uh, I'm talking about, yeah, small shows. Like you get pat downs. Um, I remember what show was I at? I think it was like when I went and saw Weezer, I was like, wow, they didn't pat me down or nothing. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm so used to it. Pop, 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 metal pop, pop. <laughs> Six minutes later. <laughs> I don't damn. Steve got shot. Somebody shot crazy Harold. Weezer fans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bigger shows, bigger venues are, are doing, but people are getting fake vaccine cards because again, they're not, I was talking to Maggie about this. I was like, why aren't they tracking these vaccinations electronically? You know, like why, if it's so easy to fake a vaccine card, why, you know what I mean? That's what most people are going to do. They'd rather spend money 
get a fucking fake I vaccine card than just go get a free shot. <laughs> Nobody's checking that shit anyway. They're just like, yeah, all right. I don't bro. know. It, I have not needed my vaccine card anywhere. Right. Well, I'm not going anywhere really, but still, I I did. You know, I went. I was flying in in what uh, late uh, May when everything was down. You know. Um, and we flew to Arizona, but yeah, nobody yeah. was checking though at, at airports or anything. Like, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, I it's just so yeah, I, I did want to talk about Joe Rogan and his bout with COVID and how his idiot followers could be like, oh, yeah, he beat COVID, he totally just beat it. Just <laughs> he did, he did jujitsu on it, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he threw, he threw like three kettlebells at it and he was done. Joe Rogan, <laughs> he choked out COVID. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking ah, oh, that irresponsible idiot. Like god, god damn it. Like he could have been spreading getting people to get vaccinated and having different guests on. And I said were strong I, proponents. I saw that clip with Dr. Rhonda Patrick that he had on that you sent me, and it's just like he kept cutting her off, you know, because he wanted to be right. He wouldn't just listen. Right. Well, what about it, this? What about yeah, this bullshit yeah. that I read? And you could tell she was getting frustrated. She's he like, said, dude, are you going to let me fucking talk here? He said COVID morbidity. He's like, well, what about the COVID morbidities? What about the COVID morbidities? Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus right. Christ, then, dude. What got me is like, she like was just times. being on it. What I liked about her is uh, what I appreciate from, from her or from anybody with uh, experience in that field, any kind of uh, expert or professional, is she didn't speak with, you know, saying, well, you know, two plus two equals four. She was like, you're going to have, she was talking in real terms. Like, well, yeah, you're going to have outliers for this. You're going to have this, you know, you know what I mean? She, it wasn't, nothing was definite, but Mm. everything she said statistically made sense to get fucking vaccinated. Ultimately, even though she couldn't say like, yes, 100% of people who are vaccinated, uh, do not get COVID or anything. Like she wasn't pulling out bullshit. Like a lot of people, uh, who are anti-vax do they're like, well, this is, equals this. And this means you're going to die. Yeah. And like she wasn't doing that. She was literally like, there's always new data coming in that we are right. processing in real time as fast as we can. Yeah. But this is what we know now. And this is why this makes sense. He's like, oh, I read about comorbidities. Uh, and I, I don't think, and then like he gets COVID. He's like, Oh my God, I need everything now. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna fucking die. I need a fucking vaccine. I listen to yeah, why, Hero for some reason. And this, I don't understand why he didn't let his uh, his superior uh, immune system fight it. You exactly know? right. That's what he was telling us would happen. If you're healthy, you don't need it. You don't need it, bro. Because <laughs> I, I will never understand these people. This is a dude who put has put like every drug in his body simultaneously. Right. He's, like, I ain't that vaccine. And he's always right. doing it. He's always doing experimental treatments too. Cause I, I listened to him for a long time and he was always just like, yeah, shoot me up with that. <laughs> like, right. Is, right. What, what and then they that? come out with the vaccine. He's like, no, I don't, I don't know about that. It's like, and, but then he's like, I don't know. People are talking about this ivermectin. Let's try that. It's like, how is that better than the fucking vaccine? <laughs> fucking <laughs> idiot. Dude, I, he, like, dude, it's like, I swear to God, like all his fucking guests, like fucking Alex Jones are rubbing up, uh, rubbing off on him. Like, stop having these people on your show, man. But there's, and there's a reason he has them on though, because he's like minded. You're mm-hmm. going to have people on. It's not even about money, Rob. Uh, I, think I think he think just has people money. on that he, no, he, he has people on. That he's like minded with. He has comedians on. He likes. He has people on who he, like that's that's what he does. His his money, thing he is, would have he would have like Fauci on and stuff like that. His thing is always the you know have both sides and the better argument will win. That's basically his outlook from what I I thought when I listened uh, to him. Uh, that's how he presents himself. But he just like anybody, he has leanings. You know what I mean? Nobody is a hundred percent objective mm-hmm. and he does. I have heard of him doing that, like veganism versus carnivore or whatever. I've never listened to that episode. Cause I don't fucking care. I, I fucking eat hostess cupcakes. Mother, I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, but when it comes to something that is affecting your country and you're just sitting up there in your castle, deciding what you're, you're going to do because you don't have to go out among millions of people uh it's, it's just it's a weird place to be and to not realize that you do have a responsibility i don't care how many times you tell your audience you're an idiot don't listen to me they're gonna they're literally listening to you mm-hmm. they're literally tuned in and listening yeah realize that okay you can tell them you're an idiot all you want but they they can't tell the difference they just yeah. think you're being self-deprecating 
Yeah. And now all that he had, you know, they're like, oh, it works. They're obviously right. they're they're going and, to the Meanwhile, he had seven treatments, literally like six or seven treatments <laughs> with we, the that best, he told us about. With the best care in the world. Right. And and people are gonna be like, Well, he took ivermectin, so that was probably it. That's what probably <laughs> that's did. the one that worked. Right. Can we can we get back to the love between Neo and Trinity? Because that's <laughs> that's what I yeah, want to fucking talk you know what? about. Do that. Let's hear you talk about that for a little while. That sounds really I, dude, entertaining. I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that sick action we saw in this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, oh exactly. my god! I can. It looks so good, dude. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I cannot fucking wait. Like December, I would catch COVID for that. If it was only in theaters, I would catch COVID for that. I'd be like, "Yep, I'm going out." <sighs> no, nope. who's home? Nope. Like it's home. It's garbage. I mean, you gotta put your stuff in the car. Of course. It's, that stuff is very heavy, too. Those are, like, really old-school typewriters. And they're not ours, so you have to be very careful with them. Yes. <laughs> Those are very, very heavy typewriters. Hey, what do, you, what, do you, what do your sons think of The Matrix? Because they saw it later. Oh, man. Uh, they, they enjoyed the movies. They, and they're not really in the, into any kind of franchise uh, like, like we are or were when we were younger. And um, I showed them the movies... Um, I tried to get Logan in on him when he was real little. I remember when revolutions was playing and he was like, so he would have been all of like 18 months old or so, almost two <laughs> years old. And I waited a few weeks after it came out and took him to a screening like on a Tuesday morning <laughs> thinking he could watch it and nobody would be there, but then somebody else showed up. So I left. Um, Cause I was like, nobody will be here on a Tuesday morning, three weeks, you know, a month after the movie comes out. Apparently, the asshole. Apparently, everyone yeah. sits next to you at the theater, right? <laughs> he didn't sit next to me. This was this guy did not sit close, but it was still. I was just like, he was Logan was real little, and I'm not one of those people who's going to bring a loud ass baby to a movie and ruin everybody's experience. So the fact that there was one other person there, I did not want to ruin his experience, even though in my from my point of view, he was ruining my experience. Yeah. But um, so I didn't want to risk you know Logan getting loud or ornery or, or whatever. So we just I just went and got my money back and we left. But I was that like, was a yeah. lead in. That was a lead in for you to tell your story about Shang Chi. That's what I was trying to do there. Oh, right. we'll get we'll get to that. But I do want to talk about the the. So I, I showed the kids the movies, but my favorite part of this is like Maggie just kind of forgets that not everybody has the same knowledge she does, right? And uh, at one point. I, I think I don't think we we had watched Reloaded and the first one. We hadn't watched Revolutions yet, and this was years ago. This was years and years ago, and the kids still bring it up though. This is this is one of their scarring moments. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember. At one point, they're talking about you know something to the effect of we're going to watch Matrix Revolutions, and she's like, "Oh, that's the one where Neo dies," <laughs> and they were like, "What? <laughs> what? Like they hadn't seen it yet?" And like she just in her mind, everybody had seen it. It's like, no, these are children. <laughs> They're new people. Like they, they haven't been around long enough to, to be autonomous and make their own decisions and, and watch their own movies. So they have not seen these movies. They're waiting for me to show them the movies. And so, yeah, so that to, they still bring it up to this day. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, Neo dies or whatever. And, uh, uh, it's, I, I, it's just, I would have taken a gun and just blew my head off at that point. But, <laughs> oh, but yeah. So the kids found that out. I was just like, why would you say that? She's like, everybody see these are her children. She's like brand new people. The only scars they have are the ones we've inflicted. So, you know what I mean? Like, this is why. Why would you do that? Um, um, but yeah, so Shang Chi. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go see Shang Chi, and with my my uh, freedom to do that during the daytime, I was like, I'll wait, I'll go, because I haven't seen a movie in the theater since fucking Birds of Prey, which is a terrible last movie to have seen. Oof, um, sorry. Yeah. Wow. And um, so Shang Chi comes out, and I'm like, oh, I'll wait, I'll go on like a, a Wednesday Thursday morning, and I'm looking at show times, and there's still. I just want to go when there's like no one there, or if there's someone else there, and I can you know pick out my tickets on the app see where they're sitting. Typically a lot of people tick or pick the back row is very common. So, and I don't, I pick the dead middle of the theater, like the very front row of the, the upper seating. I do. I do top top middle, top middle. Okay. So I, I go further forward because it's, it's like center of house. It's like that prime mastering area. Like when they master a movie, that's where they're sitting. You know, they're, they're, they're getting the, the sound, everything, you know, from 360 degrees is distance away. Yeah. Uh, and so I buy my single ticket for the one o'clock showing nobody's in the theater. And then a few hours later, this was the, this is the day before I'm like, I, I should have waited till the day of, but the day before I buy my ticket on the app 
And then I go check a few hours later. Two more people have bought tickets in my row. The entire theater <laughs> is fucking empty, and they fucking sit in my row three seats away. <laughs> now, everybody's like, oh, that's social distance. That's fine. It's not fine. There's a whole fucking theater. And then I check again. There's two more people sitting directly behind me. Directly behind me. So I cancel my fucking tickets. And those are the only people who bought tickets for that show because I checked again you, after, afterwards. You know why they wanted to sit that close to you, right? Because you had the best seat. Because it's got optimum sound and everything. <laughs> you fucked up. They're, you should have done they're that. They're like, God damn it. That. that asshole got the best seat in the house. <laughs> they're like, fuck him. Fuck him. I'm going to sit right next to him. I'll give that fucker COVID. I just couldn't, like, I wouldn't do that to somebody when we're not in a pandemic. Let alone <laughs> during a pandemic. Why would you pick? So I canceled my fucking ticket. I'm like, you did have and then the I'm first just, seats. They could have chose like a row, skip a row. Any. Yeah. If, you could have picked, if, if they'd have picked yeah. my buffer zone to me is nobody in my row. And I know that's, that's extreme, but nobody in the row behind me. And then anything back there is fine. And again, most people sit further back. Most people don't choose where I sit. It's usually available. Uh, but and again, this is a week. You know, the movie's been out for a week. It's a Thursday. It was first showing on a Thursday. Um, I just thought that people would pick corners or back rows and I'd be fine and I'd be comfortable with that. <laughs> no. But as soon as I saw it, like, and th just the notion that these people would pick those seats, tell me that they're carrying COVID and they're not going to wear masks because they don't fucking care. <laughs> they, they clearly do not care. Cause if I went in there and I was like, okay, I see somebody sitting here. Let me sit as far away from them as I possibly can and still enjoy the movie is would be my thinking. Not these motherfuckers. They're like, I'm going to sit next to that guy. I don't know who that guy is. But I, I want to sit. I want to be near that guy. I want to breathe all his air. I want to breathe all his fucking microbes, everything in and out. I want to do. That's what I want to do. And I want him to smell my breath. And, and he's like, going to. And he's going to be coughing during the whole thing. Right. Just, and I'm going to be sitting there with a mask on while they're just over there oh, 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 shoving fucking <laughs> food in their mouths. They're like, ah, oh. I just. And I'm, now I'm just like, I'll just wait. I'll just fucking wait. I was just trying to go on a on a Thursday. But you have showing. to have that seat. There's no way you can watch the movie without being in that seat. Because I would have just bought different tickets. So that's a reasonable thing to do. That is. Um, however, and in other circumstances, I would have. But it was the notion that I was first. <laughs> so why the fuck did they swarm to me? So why should I? It was it was the whole Michael Bolton, Bolton office space thing. It's like, why should I change? He's the one who sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was first. You should respect the person who picked their tickets out first. You know what I mean? So Especially that's, me in a pandemic. <laughs> exactly. You you make your you 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 pick your seats accordingly at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that was the one thing I liked about, you know, I was like assigned seating during a pandemic. This is nice. You can see exactly where you're gonna be. Right. You can point apparently people are going on there and picking <laughs> I, like, wanted to, I wanted to feel like a packed theater like right, the old right. days. <laughs> so fucking, I was just like, that's just my luck too. Like, and then I look at the next showing, um, it was at one forty, and I looked at that today, like around one o'clock uh, and, uh, nobody was at the one forty. I'm like, so not only did they have to pick rows near me, they had to pick my showing. There was a whole showing <laughs> with every seat available and they had to pick my showing. <laughs> and I ended up having to do something today. So I couldn't, I would have gone to the 140 potentially if I didn't end up having to leave the house. Uh, but I was just like, what the fuck? And there's no deal. Like some people might think, oh, well, the first showing is, is cheaper, which is true if it's bef like before noon or something at this theater. If you go to the first showing, it's like two bucks cheaper. But that after noon, it's not the same price. But if you go to the first or second or third showing or whatever. And so I just couldn't figure out like, so they had to pick my showing and they had to sit with me on top of it. Like, God damn it. You fucking dickheads. You're like, can you just put this shit on fucking this Yeah. Can, I, can I please give you $30 and watch it in the safety of my own fucking COVID free home? <laughs> like Disney plus, please. <laughs> Not like, yeah. So are you going to try and do it? Like, later I this might week? next week. I might now nah, probably, probably next week. I'll look at it on like a Tuesday or something and, and see. And if then if it was a different movie, would you have kept that seat? If it was a di now, okay. So if it was the matrix, I probably would have just shifted seats potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I probably would have just moved my seat further back to get away from the assholes. But because I'm not as excited about this movie, and again, also because I was fucking the first one to buy my ticket, I was just like, fuck you. You're not getting my fucking money. So I immediately got a refund, which it's not even a true refund because I have four fucking free movie ticket credits. So I just got my free movie ticket credit back. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, God yeah, I was, ho- I was hoping that somebody I know would see Shang-Chi because I wanted to know if it was good or okay or all the people a lot of people went are dead (laughs) (laughs) they all have covid now (laughs) they're in the icu yeah that's four 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 people got it today at the movie theater i was supposed to be i really want to go super spreader just because i want to go see a movie but i was just like uh, there's too many idiots i just yeah i mean i looked and like i i looked and i was like okay I can sit here, and then I saw these people like choosing seats like next to each other. It's like no, they, they obviously don't I, give a shit. I they almost don't, they used, don't believe in COVID. I almost used all four of my credits to go see this movie just to give myself a buffer. <laughs> like that was one thing I was I, I considered doing yeah. was using all my credits for one ticket essential for one seat just so I would know I'd have at least that much space around me. But I, I didn't do that. Yeah, I'm going to try and do what you did. I'm going to try and go on a, maybe get off work a little early and then try and head off on an off day. Something not the weekend. Or Uh, just wait another three weeks and it'll be on freaking. Yeah, it's it's going to have a quick turnaround. 45 day turnaround is what I read. How much money has that that movie made? Did it do better than. It um, made like 90 million or something. Did it really? It did. It's the number one. Box off, or it's the number one Labor Day opening now of all time. It was held by Rob Rob uh, Zombie's uh, Halloween remake, and it just uh, this weekend broke it in a pandemic. People were like, "We're gonna break movie records. This is the weekend to do it." Pandemic is soaring. Let's do it. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I wonder how it'll do in China. Has it released in China? I do not know. I haven't really been paying attention because I. Doesn't look it's very good. It's grossed 146 million worldwide. So cool. So everybody's it seen it. I haven't good. seen anything on the internet about it, which is good. I have. I'm trying to no avoid spoilers. it. I keep seeing. Oh, let's talk about the end of Shang Chi. I'm like, no, let's not. Oh, uh, you saw that? I haven't even seen. No, I mean, like I have. It. I just saw the headline, and I just keep scrolling. I don't uh, even want to read uh, it. Uh, so Sean. evidently, there's an end credit scene. Sean and I were talking earlier about how we want marvel to be like the matrix you know because it's just sean was saying it's getting too cutesy wootsy marvel is you know it's, it's like it's a little, get a little sterile <clears throat> get a little yeah. sterile over there it's um, uh again, with the where, where they keep pushing the the more comedic aspect except the the jokes that they're they're showing in the trailers are, aren't funny and you can tell they're trying it just reminds me very much of you know like aquaman level writing it's like, oh god, they're they're just they're they're super formulaic at this point, and like more so than they've ever been. I mean, I, they've always been formulaic to an extent in that you know you have your hero protagonist and they you know win in the end or whatever. But I just mean down on a more granular uh, granular level. Why can't I say that word? Um, where even they're like, okay, we need X amount of jokes per minute almost is like the kind of thing where they're at now. Where it's <laughs> insert okay, well, jokes here. Comment. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, serious, serious, serious. Laugh, serious, serious, serious. Laugh. And it's like, all right, calm down, calm the fuck down with that shit. I'm with you. The trailer looked like that, but I'm gonna reserve judgment till I see it. So, yeah, I want to see it. I, I mean, trailers don't. You know, the best trailers don't reveal the the, the good stuff. You know, mm-hmm. they just get you excited to see it. This trailer did not get me excited to see it. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Talking about good stuff. Uh, I watch. I finished Mayor of Easton. Have you watched that yet? East Town. East Mayor of East Town, or like I like to call it, uh, Mayor of Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Did you watch you... the murder derby yeah. video? I sent you the murder oh, derby shoot. video. No, I, I, I had to finish it, it oh, before you said it. Come on. And then I forgot. No, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to finish oh, it. Oh, I didn't. I thought it was a spoiler. No, no. There's no. Remember, I no. said I had like 30 minutes left or 20. Yeah, minutes I was like, I said, I said, I was like, you've seen enough of it. You can uh, watch this. Oh no, I, I forgot. Do you like it? Yeah. Uh, I did enjoy it. It is, uh, it, it's very well written because, you know, like normally I could sit and watch a TV show with my wife 
and I know exactly what's going to happen in the episode. Uh-huh. And this is very, it, it, it's got lots of turns, so you can't really yes. get a gauge on what you think is going to happen. Did you see what was the ending? Did, um, you, did you call that? No, I didn't. Yeah, me no, me neither. I didn't. Oh, so you've seen it? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to spoil it for anybody because it, it hadn't been out that long. Really, so. Something I'd recommend to both of you guys that's relatively new to Netflix, if you enjoyed clickbait. that, is wa- clickbait. Uh, did you start watching it yet, Rob? No, but I, I did see it. It's, I uh, noticed it. When you, it's you like an eight-part series. It starts a little slow. I wasn't wholly on board at first, but it, it gets really, really good and uh, went went to a lot of unexpected places, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a doc so, series or just a series? No, it's just a uh, limited series. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, clickbait. That was that was really enjoyable. You know what I just watched this last week? Band so, of Brothers. I had never seen that before. I, I no, never I've never seen it. that either. Oh, really? I'm not big in the World War II stuff. Yeah. Somebody mentioned. Uh, in, uh, is that a movie? Saving Private Ryan, and I was like, I thought it was a series. Yeah, it was a series oh, on okay. HBO. It's like eight parts. Uh, I enjoyed it. I liked it. You don't yeah. like World War II stuff? I just, I'm not, I, I've never been one of those people. I don't know if it just reminds me of like, cause growing up, it was always old dudes who were really into world war two. And I don't know if I just associate it with that, but like, uh, there's, I was always, I would always see like, if there's world war two stuff on TV, there was always some old man and a lazy boy watching it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just, what never, are you talking about? Seen, Bubba loves world world Bub, war II. Bubba's a lot like Rob. He's like an old man in a young man's body. <laughs> but uh so Sean's favorite movie sense. is Dunkirk. So <laughs> <laughs> never seen it. No, but I, I mean I I've, I've enjoyed like World War II stuff. It's not like I hate it. It's just not a genre I run to. Um like I, I liked uh Saving Private Ryan. Um I've but seen his a, favorite a handful part was of the love ones. story. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a singer>. Um <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's just not lion. The love story though got me. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Steve. I, yeah, that was actually now that you say that, the love between that guy and his rifle, that sniper dude. Yeah. That was, that was touching. That was the best part. Yeah. I don't think I'm into like any kind of I don't know. I'm not really into war, like realistic war movies. I'm into more fantastical type stuff, I think. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, I just want I just want to say fuck you guys because that fucking Neo and Trinity dynamic is one of the best b- to love stories. I've I'm not seen. disputing that. I'm disputing okay. the sudden newfound love that you have not mentioned after 20 years of watching these movies. Okay, until well, day. That's to, that's what I'm saying. Right after the action, that is the best part. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a response. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. We've had billions. I got, of I got nothing, man. I mean, my favorite yeah. movie is Casablanca, and and this fucker never said I've anything never, about no love story. I've, I've never seen it. I've never seen Casablanca. Mm, that's fine. Oh, you know what? Maggie kind of got. Uh, she's getting me into like Alfred Hitchcock stuff, so I'm starting to see some old ha- Alfred Hitchcock stuff. There's uh, some good one. You ever watch Rear Window? That's what we just watched. Oh man, that I was good, huh? I was very unimpressed with really Rindo. Um the, the part that impressed me was more technical in that they shot. Right. Like, the fact that they shot the whole thing from the apartment basically kind of reminded me of like a stage play. Um, but a lot of the dialogue was incredibly boring. A lot of the dialogue was him either talking to his nurse or him talking to his girlfriend. It's like 1940, like, dude, when that movie was made. The it shadowing like the in it. It was like the, the 50s or 60s, but um, the shadowing of, of everything. I got all and that's those. The thing. See, that's 4K. a lot of the stuff I don't notice because I've seen that, in, you know, people have been influenced and improved upon that stuff. Right. But uh, that's where that's how it, a lot of that crap started. Right. And yeah. that's the thing. Like, I don't it's hard to insert myself into, you know, a movie that's 60, 70 years old and notice every little technology that's no longer new and has not been new in a very long time. Um. So that's my excuse. Like, and again, I'm not, I'm not shitting on it or anything. Uh, you just, shit on it. Yeah, who cares? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Um, Everybody that made, was in that is dead. <laughs> right. That's how old uh, it is. But no, I, I did. I did like it. Um, I thought it was weird because I was like, oh, like that guy just killed his wife. That's what I thought from the beginning. So that was the other part <laughs> that I was just like, oh, that's not very exciting. Um, <laughs> the other, the other movie that I, what was the other Hitchcock movie that we watched that I actually really liked though? Fuck. 
What's that? No, it wasn't the birds. Psycho. Psycho. I had her watch Psycho. We did watch, but I've seen Psycho before, and she hadn't seen it. So that kind of, I actually kind of kickstarted her interest into the Hitchcock, but then she kept going. Um, but she had never seen Psycho. Uh, and then I do have appreciation for Psycho because it's like you know the first like slasher movie or whatever. Uh, there was another. What's another one? To Name catch another a one. Thief. Have you ever seen that one? Dial M for Murder. That's what it was. I really oh, like that, that one. That's good. Yeah, is that, that was, the one really where the, that they're one. like the call is coming from inside the house? No, oh. <laughs> that's a movie called Black Christmas. They they um, remade uh, <laughs> Dial in for Murder. It's called something else. You've probably heard of it. I forget what the or maybe they called, just totally write up. It's called uh, Dial L for the love between <laughs> Trinity and Neo. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it Dude, is. Dude, when he's fucking going to her, fucking trying to save her. Oh my god, and he's just fucking moving Earth to get to her. Uh, god damn. Going to, yeah. Fucking. Um, River Window was 1954. Yeah, so, it was the 50s. Dude, I mean, um, that's 75 fucking years old. Somebody. Right. That's what I mean. Like it's, it's, it's an yeah. old ass movie and it's hard. It's like when my friend, I have a friend who his favorite movie is Jaws. And, but I've seen so many movies that have stood on the shoulders of Jaws. It's hard to truly appreciate Jaws because I wasn't there when it came out. Dun, and I've seen, dun. I've seen Jurassic Park, which is done by the same director. And it's like a better version of Jaws. It's a much faster paced version of Jaws basically. <laughs> um, so, and again, I'm, I'm not, I could differentiate the fact that, okay, I didn't enjoy it that much. Like that doesn't mean it's not a masterpiece. It doesn't mean it's not a great movie just because I'm like, I, I can't put myself in the right mindset to in, appreciate it the way I should. Uh, but I'm just being honest with myself. I don't want to be one of those people who's also just like, I have to respect the classics. Like I, I can approach it from my mindset of having seen it way too late. Uh, but I mean, some old stuff really stands up though. Again, dial in for murder really like that one and like i did not know how that was gonna like play out in the end steve's what out to steve it, what happened to him? rob's <laughs> podcast now baby steve is out i got rid of him uh don't look in the rear window <laughs> but Matt, the other one maggie wants me to watch that i haven't seen yet is north by northwest that's a good one dude i like to catch a thief that's got i a, haven't seen that that's one, got so. grace kelly and uh jimmy uh not jimmy stewart um Oh, what's his name? The other guy, the other actor at the time. The the other one? Yeah, Cary the Grant. other one. Cary Grant, yeah. It's got Grace yeah, Kelly and Cary two. Grant. But it, it's, it's a Hitchcock film, too. It's Dude, Grace Kelly's in, like, all his shit. Yeah, what yeah I tell. because Grace Kelly was awesome. Yeah. yeah she's Sorry, great. Uh, I went to get my uh, 4K. Oh, Vertigo. Out. I forgot about Vertigo. that Vertigo, that was yeah. the one I was thinking of. And then the birds, obviously. I got this. I got these on 4K. These Alfred Hitchcock. Is that a collection? Yeah. What, what's in there? What's all in there? Rear window, Vertigo, Psycho, and the birds. The Matrix and the Matrix <laughs> nice. and the love between Neo and Trinity. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, I, I haven't seen any of those except Psycho. It's the only one I really. Yeah, I saw Psycho a long time ago. I was like, damn, that was fucked up. Uh. But yes, yeah, so I I want to I do want to watch four class. I start we started our Halloween stuff already. So um, I yeah, recently you, we what's you, that? you and all the uh, retail stores. It's <laughs> yeah, like, dude, that, it's well, not even like before September. <laughs> I'm like, they got the right. Halloween direction. I was like, dude, you didn't even wait till September. I was like, <laughs> and, and it's not like Halloween is like the first of October. It's the bloody end, man. That's two yeah. freaking months. I I love that. Um, what do you yeah, recommend so we, for a, a viewing this year? Something. Well, what we like to do. So last year we watched a ton of, of horror movies and we started it again this year. This year, what I'm trying to get through is um, movies I haven't seen and movies that I haven't seen in a long time. So I started it with Black Christmas, which the, the original from 1974. Oh, the one uh, with Maggie, the, the call is coming from inside the house. Yes, exactly. I knew that. Um, so started with that. <laughs> And, uh, which I don't, you know, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't hold up that well. Maggie had never seen it. Then I watched John Carpenter's The Fog, which I had never seen. That's another one I am not going to recommend. Um, what else? Did we? we watched some other stuff too, but, and we always rewatch all the actual Halloween movies, like the Halloween series. Uh, we do those every year, uh, but I, I just recommend looking for stuff you haven't seen, you know, or stuff you haven't seen in a long time and, and watching it. If you haven't watched all the Halloween movies, do that. Um, it's so been a I, while. I haven't seen them all, but I, I've seen most of them. 
uh, we we have a we have a few, uh, you know, we have uh, yeah we have a few streaming service subscriptions. One of them is called Shutter, which has a lot of horror content. So I've been like going through there, been looking at Amazon's and Netflix is like uh, tomorrow a movie comes out called Malignant, which is probably not going to be that good because it's by James Wan, who did Saw and he did Insidious and he did The Conjuring. And as you know, I'm not really a fan of any of those it's not i really thought you went back good. and revisited saw and you yeah. said it wasn't i did that bad. Yeah, i did i i revisited it and i appreciated it more for what it was but it still doesn't make it a good movie <laughs> um but i was able to i was able to enjoy it more though um the original and, or like yeah, yeah the, the original. original two three four five six seven eight i haven't really even seen the sequels because i wasn't ever impressed by the original hey what was um, that japanese horror film you told me to watch i never did and it was you said something like the audio was real fucked up or something it's probably the eye which they remade which i never saw the remake but they're back when i was in the early 2000s i was in my japanese horror phase and i was watching like uh, a lot of uh takashi Miike stuff uh, but I, I found this movie called The Eye, and that was really good. I don't you, even remember it now. Well, you but you said something like the, the audio, audio was like scary or something. Or yeah, that was probably it. Okay, I'm guessing. Like the, I think the bass on that DVD was like insane or <sighs> something. Okay, um, but that's where a lot of stuff like The Ring and stuff. Ring, The Ring came from Ringu. Um, Audition is a great movie if you haven't seen that. I highly, I think Audition is on HBO Max. Watch Audition. Okay. Don't watch it with the children. Um, <laughs> but yeah, watch Audition. Frailty is on uh, Amazon Prime Video. Highly recommend that. I haven't seen that in a long time, so I'm probably going to watch that again. With uh, that has Bill Paxton and Matthew McConaughey in it. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend Frailty. If you're looking for some good horror stuff, mm-hmm. psychological horror. Yeah, um, I'll be watching that shit by myself because nobody else likes to watch horror. Uh, what else? I don't know. But yeah, so you want to delve into our our Hawkeye comic, yeah, Hawk, Hawk, <laughs> Hawk guy or Hawkeye, Hawk guy. <laughs> All right, let me guy. let me get some creator credits out of the way here. So this was a series from 2012. Uh, it was uh, the writer, uh, the main, the writer was Matt Fraction. The main uh, artist, but there was multiple artists. Main art, artist was David Asia. Also, uh, Javier Polito was another one. I don't have everything in front of me, but um, so this was, uh, ultimately a 22 issue series, according to Steve, who read every single issue, uh, <coughs> because he I, liked it so much. The Steve, um, reads, a com- the love Steve reads a comic. That's the, that's that's the, the name of the story. show. And I, cause he was in it for the love story. <laughs> the love and between him and his brother. How, how many issues did you read? I read wherever it went from blue to red. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. That, what, I saw so the, when the covers. Story just, I saw the covers. There's blue. So you read five blue. issues. I read five okay. issues. Then it there was the last one was blue and red mixed, and then okay whatever was after that was he read red. Part, he stopped, and at, I was like, okay, that seems like a good place. He to stopped stop. at part two of the tape. I hate that. Uh, How many times? Because I read six issues. I've read the whole series before, but I read six issues <laughs> this past couple weeks. Did, so did did I miss one? It's about uh, Clint Barton. But I tend to, because my eyes are going because I'm getting old, I tend to read his name as cunt sometimes. So that's always distracting because it's in all capital letters. So it looks like he's just like, that was stupid cunt. It's like, oh, no, he says Clint. Let me look closer there. So, yeah. What is it? That, the British that's version? That was fun. You need my readers? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm getting I'm getting up there. So that that was kind of entertaining. That added a little spice to it because I always had to do like a double take. It's like cunt oh no clint, his name clint. <laughs> so this made this one made me appreciate clint barton a lot more i already did isn't appreci- he great yeah i already did appreciate him from the avengers but i really i really enjoyed uh this version so th- of him this came out after avengers correct yeah so, so this was um, this was this was more written like his character from the movie correct yeah I don't. I feel like this character is a way different take. Actually, uh, this one is very down on his luck, um, and he's he's so every man. The other, I feel like Clinton Barton in the Avengers movies is very much military more and family uh, man. Yeah, yeah. This was to me was much more even, much more grounded than that version of Hawkeye. In my opinion, I thought he, this take was 
It was great. He's definitely not a family man. This one. No, he's, no, he's, he's, no, he's cheating on everybody. <laughs> he's sleeping. <laughs> I thought he was. He had. I don't know if he's. They didn't mention anything with Scarlet or not Scarlet <laughs> Black Widow, but I guess he used to have a wife. Bobby is is Bobby anyone that you know? I don't of? know. Bobby. That's uh, all. I, I got her first name. Bobby and then, was in Agents of Shield. Oh, I wonder if that's that character. Huh. And then Jessica Drew, he was dating at the time, which is yeah. Spider Woman, right? Jessica. Yeah, I think so. And I always get, wait, Jessica. Yeah, just, I always get Jessica Jones against Jessica Drew confused. Yeah. So, so he was dating her at the time, but ended up cheating on her. And, but yeah, that's <laughs> good. But yeah, Clint, man, he was, he was taken. You just forget he's just a normal guy and he's taking some damage, man. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yes. you got a lacerated liver. You got a busted spleen, two broken ribs. And, you know, this is him outside of the Avengers. This is just him, you know, like, bro, protect, bro, protecting his neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when did John Wick come out? I don't was remember. It after this comic or before? I think it was after. I wonder if I think the it was guy like got the idea from for it from from this comic, yeah, the first comic. Taken and they were Eastern European and, and yeah. John Wick, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the guys he goes up against the neighborhood in the neighborhood is <laughs> they call it the tracksuit mafia. <laughs> They're just European dudes wearing uh, freaking Adidas jumpsuits. It's freaking great. And all they call everybody say, bro, 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 bro. bro. <laughs> did, did you notice he hey, changed yes. our things? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. That's I did. not why. I do want to say it's kind of funny. That's actually coincidence. Uh, I did not change it to bros because of this comic. I maybe subconsciously I did though, but that, I just did that to make it shorter and to give it a different starting letter. So when Sean's, I went to get Sean's something talking to the group, about the the group chat between us, he named it bros yeah. <laughs> on our bro. Yeah, and with if, if you all have Apple phones, then you you can name your your group chat, and I I changed the name to bros just to make it easier to to <laughs> send messages. But it just coincided with the fact that I was reading the word bro. <laughs> about every three lines in this comic book yeah it's not intentional though it's kind of funny you pointed it out and i was like oh yeah that's, that probably happened not intentionally because of this but subconsciously because of this he was even calling women bros too it was great like hey yeah. bro and he's got the neighbor who calls him hawk guy which i love and he's always like it's hawkeye man and <laughs> dude he's just so down on his luck and it's like every issue it starts with this like okay this looks bad or something mm -hmm. like that like it's all it's it's just so well written and i i hope this is how they adapt it for the disney series because uh it's got the kate bishop hawkeye in it she's great um a lot of sexual yeah, tension between them i didn't i thought he was i didn't is it just this comic? between him and kate yeah no no he makes a point to say i chose you because i'm not sexually attracted to you. yeah but she yeah, and then is he's attracted to him uh, and then in the next panel, though, he's like, at least I think so. I don't know. Like right. He's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. There's, he's some, kinda, uh, there's some uh, tension there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think she respects him. I don't think she's. Dude, what comic did you read? I read all right? 22 of them. I read the Steve whole storyline. Steve doesn't really pick up on the romantic angles. <laughs> yeah, I, it's trust only me. his favorite part <laughs> of the comic. I know romance. Dude, <laughs> read, we hurt. read the first first five uh, it's, uh, it is subtle i will say yeah, it is subtle it's but it's subtle. there uh, yeah but uh, it's there it's in the details man no no there's no i think steve didn't there. pick up on it because we were talking about it the other day steve was like well that's his daughter right and i'm like no <laughs> that oh, is God. not his daughter i don't know if you noticed <laughs> no originally yeah. originally i thought because all i saw was the avengers and he was training his daughter with the arrow i thought his daughter became the next hawkeye but dude I, just read the comic. I think you're reading too <laughs> fast. That's how you got Dude, 22. Dude, I issues. read. There's no sexual tension throughout this comic between yes, the, there is. No, there's not. I agree with Rob. I agree with Rob. Oh, you didn't even, so you didn't even read the whole thing. It's very so I have before. No. I have before. But yeah, he he purposely curbs it, but yes. I think he's yes. definitely attracted to her. Because I think she's so. a lot younger, obviously. Yes. She is. Yes. She's That's why way, he curbs She's it. way too young. If she is attracted but to him, then... But she is definitely it. attracted to him. Okay. You say so. Disagree. But uh, God, I, I hope somebody com please somebody comment. <laughs> yeah. I'm not on the social media, but somebody comment 
if there was any tension between nobody's uh, listening sexual this. tension between you, kate bishop and uh hawk hawk guy the you did make hawk a good guy. point about john wick though because it does start with a dog yeah. getting beat up you know and yeah. him, him taking you care sure of the you dog. read that part of it dude i read it <laughs> Dude, the, yeah, John Wick came out in 2014, so it did come after this comic. Huh. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but that story would it, it would have been in development for like freaking way before. But they that. do make changes to things. That is so true. That could have been a quick change. It could have been they killed his wife, yeah. and they were like, you know, let's, let's have him kill the dog. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you never know. There's some good action you know. scenes with the bow in this too. Yeah, really cool stuff. And yeah. I, I just like how. I don't know. He's so he's like a very super skilled archer, but he's he's always put in a position where he's like on his on his back foot. You know what I mean? He's always got somebody handed him boat or arrows. He doesn't know what they are. It's like, hand me an arrow. It's like a smoke arrow. It's like, why do you need a boomerang arrow? And then like that pays yeah, off later. Yeah. Like that was that was good shit. That was a, that was a good. Uh, what do you call the book? The <laughs> OK, so there's one, two and three. What do you call them? Issues. Are they books? Issues. issues that that issue was very good where he, he was gonna label them with tape so he went out yeah. to get tape and yeah. that's how it all started there's one where <laughs> and, and, and then they, it it then it goes because he didn't get to tape them he's trying to find the right arrow and then like you right. said the boomerang arrow finally plays there's pays off yeah she's there's, like why do you need a boomerang arrow <laughs> and then she uses it. He's like, wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> it comes back. It is very well written. I, I enjoy yes. the storylines. There's one where he hits one of the tracksuit mafia with a putty arrow. And <laughs> from a, he's like in a car, <laughs> like a moving car. And he hits the dude. And as the car's going by, he's like, putty arrow, bro. <laughs> and the guy's just st- stuck on the ground with putty all over him. <laughs> it's fucking so, great. That was the other thing. The, I thought the artwork was great. Um, it, it almost had like a minimalistic style to kind of echo, yeah. You know the vibe, the very you know this was not the high end Avengers superhero ad- adventuring type stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I, he conveyed the action really well. Uh, very slight color panel or palette, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. kept it yeah. very simple. What was that yellow guy? That comic with the yellow guy that was. Scud the disposable Scud assassin. The, yeah, it kind of reminded me drawn like that. It's very, like you said, minimal. You know. Yeah. It's good though. It's it, you could see everything. Yeah, I really liked it. I just I like the whole approach to it. Conveyed the action really well. Um, really good job with facial expressions. Even you know keeping it simple. Uh, I feel like <laughs> he's like, he's always getting beat up. He's like my concussions have concussions. <laughs> <laughs> very well, like you guys. What would you guys rate this comic? Man, Out of three, four stars. Three and a half. Uh, yeah, I think I'm with Rob. I, I really... Or really a must like read. It. I mean, I, I think you should, if you're going to read Four comic, stars from me. Oh yeah, my God, star. another four I would, stars? I God, all that. you give out is fours now. Well, also, do you notice I'm the curator on this show? So <laughs> is it, there's a very good chance. Yeah, but I thought if, like I thought if you're going to give some four stars, you would have read it you, all, all. Do you read? know? I've read it all before. I read it years ago. You when know, you were fucking not you, reading comics. Oh, do you remember you, you sent me um, that comic book? That is the Hawkeye you sent me. You sent me the um, that issue. The oh, five, did I? Yeah. I was looking oh, like, for I, it. Like a, I couldn't like find a trade it. paperback. Put it away. Yeah, it was the trade paperback. You sent it. Man, to I am such a good. Uh, that was like five yeah. or six years ago, dude. That was like I don't know. It might yeah, have been like seven. It, it was a long time how, ago. How how it, how, yeah. how many issues was it? Do you remember? It was like it's probably five. It's probably five. Or I think six it was issues. five. Yeah, probably five. Exactly the first where five it issues. starts from blue to red. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. He's right. Uh, what did you think of that tape? That that tape. The issues, part one and part two of the tape. Oh, dude, I, I just, I love the whole thing. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I four stars. Yeah. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Like, did not, I just, did not know that was Kate Bishop in the mask. That was awesome. That was a good. That reveal. was cool. That was a cool that little was a reveal. Good reveal that I did um, not see coming. Where she was playing Madame Mask or yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah, that was cool. There's a guy that you didn't get to. He's the main uh, antagonist in this series. His name's Kazi, and he was his parents were killed and he was pretty much raised by the tracksuit mafia. Uh And then he ends up trying to, they, the tracksuit mafia tries, hires Kazi to kill Clint. And, um, 
he ends up taking them out with, you know, those little, uh, those collar, those things you put in your collar to keep your collar straight. They're like little plastic yeah. pieces. He ends yeah. up killing them with that. <laughs> Cause Kate, Kate mentions, it <laughs> I don't to, remember that. Yeah. Kate mentions it to Clint earlier on in the series. Mm -hmm. Clint's like, what's this? And she's like, it's for your collar. And then in the very end, that's how he ends up killing. He's out of arrows and he's like, he hits this dude like right in the eye or something with that. And I was like, this is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Good series, though. Man, really funny, man. I laughed so many yes. times in this yeah. series. Mm -hmm. Very entertaining. I really like Matt that, Fraction. I think I want to read some more of this guy. That's, uh, well, that's why I sent it to Rob, though, years ago. I don't know what exactly. Dude, it was like six was. years ago. I yeah. I read, it's been a while since I read it, so I don't remember uh, most. I just remember thoroughly enjoying it. That was um, when I, you were trying before, to get us into comics. You're like, Which I've really been trying to do my whole life. But. <laughs> Rob goes to the mail. He's like, oh, from Sean. Then puts it under the short short leg of the couch. <laughs> no, I, I put it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clean out my garage one day and uh, and sell it on eBay for like a minute. Right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's why I said it to you. It's, it's a four-star series for me. I just thought it was great. It was... I I'd never really read Hawkeye. I wasn't into the character. That was actually a recommendation by my uh, comic book guy, uh, Marcus at, at ground zero comics in Strongsville. He, I was looking for something new. He was like, he handed me that. I was like, okay. Cause he, rec he got me into preacher years ago, like when it was new and it was still going on and stuff. So he, he knew my taste. So if I asked him for a recommendation, like Mo nine times out of ten I'll, i'm gonna enjoy it so he recommended that and again it's something i would have never looked at if somebody hadn't that i trusted hadn't handed it to me there were um, some unique issues in this series too like where um i get clint had a problem with hearing before and i guess he was he got next to a bomb and lost his hearing again so like a lot of the panels were like sign language and stuff and then there, yeah. there was one issue where it was just like Lucky, the dog Lucky. Yes. That, that he ends up saving. Issue. Yeah. And yes. it's just like a bunch of pictographs of like what the dog how is the seeing. Dog, what, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. This is a great issue. <laughs> and it was like how the dog, like it, when he, when the dog interacts with different people, there'll be like different picti pictograms or whatever of like, like this person has donuts. This person smell, <laughs> smells like uh, trash or something or whatever. And that's what the dog, it's like the dog's perspective. And I, I forgot I about that. Like the whole issue was like that. Yeah. It was like the dog. The dog, again. The dog like the figuring out. Again. It was great. But uh, yeah, I really, I, I learned to appreciate Clint a little bit more after reading this. And like you said, I hope they, this Disney Plus series, I hope they follow this kind of of story of, of this kind <laughs> of version, shaking his head no version of clint no. No. no way they've already established the character oh so. they can still they can still do some of the storylines though <laughs> it's not going to be as good though i don't think uh, so but yeah the matt matt fraction uh david asia run uh the 2012 hawkeye series 22 issues in total uh i fucking stellar man i just it's it was right up my alley man and it's not it's not R rated or anything. It's not like a Punisher Max series. Um, very PG thirteen. Uh, it it moves quickly. You don't have to know about the Avengers or anything really to to get into it. Um, very street level story, basically. You know, he's trying to save. Uh, you know, it starts off these the tracksuit mafia shows up. They they buy the apartment building that he lives in, and then the first thing they do is like make the rent skyrocket so they can kick everybody out so they can sell the building for more money. And that's kind of what kickstarts the whole thing where he's like, well, I'm not going to let this happen. I got fucking Avengers money. I'll just pay everybody's rent. Mm -hmm. And that goes sideways. Um, uh, so yeah, it's just a very street level story, very relatable. And, you know, it has the whole dog angle. He rescued a dog at one point. Um, Arrow. Uh, just for all very his name. Right. <laughs> he's like yeah that was great too yeah. but like he, he looks at the tag on the dog and it's named arrow he's like oh come on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, the, and the dog pretty much mirrored himself like the dog was shot lost an eye yeah. you know like yeah. recovering from always had bandages around <laughs> the dog you know <laughs> yeah that was, that was great it's like he's got the perfect mate and he's like and so the name Lucky. The He's like, you will save this dog. <laughs> like, I don't care how much it costs. Yeah. Save this dog. 
And yeah, uh, it's the, the very doctors... easy to relate to that. It's just very yeah. easy to relate to that. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. it very John Wicky. Uh, and then, you know, he, he's not even in costume. You know what I mean? And he still looked cool. He just had like the shirt the with like the little kind of arrow, uh, the wings of the arrow on it or whatever kind of <laughs> logo on it on his shirt. Sometimes. On the wings of love. <laughs> there was a <laughs> there's a there's a scene where he's banging some chick and the tracksuit mafia comes to get him and he dives for his bow. And he's naked. Oh, the little face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, little face. The, the original <laughs> Hawkeye, like the, the original yeah. costume head. Yeah, ble- yeah. it's yeah. like blanking out his yeah. privates. <laughs> that was fucking. That great. was great. Just little shit like that throughout. You know, it's just very yeah. cre- creative, very inventive. Yes, a lot of attention to detail and just stuff I would never think of. Just, just a, a very unique comic, I think overall. Uh, and I think they got to do it because Hawkeye isn't necessarily like. You know, he's not an upper tier character. He's not a hot selling character. So I, I think they gave the the creators some leeway to kind of do something different instead of the usual, you know, he's going to go out in his purple and blue take on Robin Hood outfit, you know? Yeah. Um, but they still give him those purple colors. He had like a purple right, shirt. Right. He, mm-hmm. But it's just, again, it's just very straight. Now, that's what Rob was saying, though. That's that could be an Avengers ish influence, but Avengers came out the same year. So it's kind of, it's really, I don't really know that that's true. So, mm-hmm. um, cause Avengers came out 2012. This came out 2012. So, uh, I think if anything, that's probably coincidence. Well, it's definitely um, a different take. Cause you know, they don't, they don't do the family thing. So, right. Or maybe, maybe they weren't when the Avengers originally came out. Cause we didn't know he had a family. So maybe that yeah. changed over throughout the Marvel universe, but, Right. You know, maybe this was going to be the Hawkeye we were going to see. So, Don't know. So yeah, that's a, that's a four you. star for me. Three and a half stars from the Rocco boys. Yeah. Uh, so definitely worth checking out. Um, again, it's on Marvel Unlimited. You can buy trade paperbacks. You can buy it on Comixology. Lots of ways to check it out. Um, yeah. So good job. Another it. great pick. So, what do you got for us next Sh- week? Shocking, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's like the said, curator. John's like, the everything I pick, I love. <laughs> he told me he, told me, uh, he was going to do The Flash this week. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't. No, <laughs> Shut up, Rob. There's a good love story in The Flash between him well, and... That's I- what Rob was telling me. Rob was like, do a love story Oh, for man, Steve. yeah. It was like between him and Iris, it was like one of the best love stories I think I've ever seen. <laughs> the fuck is Iris? I don't know the Flash, <laughs> so I know nothing of the Flash. His wife. Going to look up and see if something wife. is on here. Like I was trying to, like I was thinking about kind of going in a different direction, like doing I'll, another indie comic. I want to get back oh, to some the, shitty one. Do man. another Marvel. I just bought the goddamn Marvel app. I want to get All back right. to another. Venom. I don't care. Do whatever. You want. How much is Marvel? Uh, Ten bucks a month. Damn, it's that high. Yep. Yeah. Um, because I was I was thinking about doing like Peter Badge's uh hate. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of hate, but that's a comic book <laughs> that I used to read. I don't know why it appealed to me. Um <laughs> but yeah, Peter Badge's hate. But no, I think uh I think I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna lean into the Marvel thing for Rob and we're gonna do we're gonna read uh why is this you why is this you six way over there? That's weird. All right, I'm gonna read at least the first six issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm guessing that's a stopping point. I don't know that it is. Um, but I'm looking at it on Marvel Unlimited, and it literally goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. So be aware of that when you're reading. What are we doing again? <laughs> don't you ever Ultimate, listen. Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 6. Ooh, Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, and it is the, I think, uh, do they have multiple series? Can you send me a link so I can see the picture? <laughs> it's just called Ultimate Spider-Man, bro. Dude, yeah, I, Ultimate Spider-Man. Marvel 2000. sucks, the website. It's just ridiculous. Is there only All one right. Ultimate Spider-Man? Just set, send me a picture so I know where to start reading. Okay, <laughs> I can do that. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's for the old a, man here. Fuck it. Spidey. Then I don't have to put my glasses on. <laughs> Did you watch the What If latest episode? Have you caught up yet? Or are you still saying? No? I, I am all. I'm all caught up on What If. Okay. Did you like the zombie episode? I did. I actually did like it. That one was. Did fun. you like it? Yeah, I thought it was real fun. 
So that was Chadwick Boseman. Bo- Bozeman. Bozeman. Yeah, he he was in. That was his was... last appearance. Yeah, oh, they, that, okay. Yeah, they tricked us. They yeah. said the other one was yeah. his last one. Unless he's got some more that we don't know about. Right? Who knows? It's like Tupac yeah, keeps picture. releasing stuff after he's dead. But yeah, I enjoyed the Mar- the zombies thing more than I uh, thought I would. Um, I literally like the Spider Man stuff. I had to look at the end. I was like, was that Tom Holland? And it was not Tom Holland. But I, I, a lot of the time, he sounded not, a lot like yeah, Tom Holland. Yeah, he did. And uh, so, yeah, like part of the time I was like, I, I was really going back and forth because but they had a lot of the voice actors. You yeah. Know? John Favreau. So, was, that was him, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was John him. Favreau. You had David Dash Malchian as uh, Hank or whatever. Evangeline um, Lilly. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dude, so what'd you think people. of Paul Rudd, the head? That was fucking great. That, and then he got the was, cape. That was pretty solid. <laughs> He's just yeah. flying around with the cape. <laughs> That was so that fun. Was, that was a pretty fun episode. It kind it, it kind of wrapped up kind of lame, in my opinion. You know, it was a little too open. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I haven't been super impressed with any of the what if stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I thought they I, I had to check and see if that last episode was a two parter because I was like, are they going to pick this up? And I was like, oh, right. I guess they're just wrapping that that way. It's uh, it's something good that's new to watch on a Wednesday. Yeah. I you, mean, it's yeah. It's not that I got to so, come home and, oh, I can't wait to watch this. But yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, what's fresh tonight? But oh. See, that's that's what I fear, though, is like yeah. when, it, when it starts getting diluted like that, that's when the quality suffers. You know, when it's just more like, oh, what else can we do? You know, as opposed to somebody being like, oh, 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 I have a really great idea. It's just kind of like, oh, let's tap into this. Yeah. And that's that's something I I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but um yeah, you get diminishing returns, though, for sure. You're talking about oversaturation type thing? Yeah, where where, they're just well, flooding. It's not even over. It's not even over. It's more just the from on the creative side, where it seems oh, like gotcha. it's gotcha. not necessarily creatives coming to the producers and saying, "Oh, I have a fantastic idea." It's more like the producers looking through Marvel Unlimited and being like, "What's what is this all about? Can we do something with this? Let's yeah. see if we, let's do something with this." Well, you see, know what I mean? Like it. You, see, you're not used to watching TV series anymore. You're like all movies that's because it's. It's because they're terrible. It, no, that's because <laughs> you have to do that stuff to have 23 goddamn episodes a year. Used to be what? They used to be 33. Now, like the average is 23. But I mean, I thought the what if series would just it was just going to be some wacky stuff they pulled. But yeah. it seems to hinge off everything we've seen from the movie. Yeah, so. it seems it's like, all about the MCU. And to me, that's just a little yeah. boring. Yeah. You know, I'd, but, ra- I'd rather see some crazy ass shit. Yeah. Like every episode seems to have a scene that you've seen in a movie already. Right. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? There's yeah. like always that one thing. It's like, I don't need any of that. Just like you said, come up with a whole different. Yeah. And I thought like, that's what the go series was crazy. Be. Yeah. I thought that's how it was. Well, maybe go. it will be eventually. I mean, I we don't know. It. After this many. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm with you. It's no, just, I thought the Doctor Strange like... one was actually pretty good. That Doctor Strange one's probably my favorite, which is crazy because I don't like Doctor Strange really. But I, yeah. I liked that. I really liked the the love story in the Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, Steve. That was... Steve was just staring at me like, uh huh. Oh, uh, it's because it, 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 I wasn't listening again. I was thinking of the giant. Yeah, of course. I was thinking I of the giant, uh, the, uh, wasp, the giant wasp, the giant wasp zombie. That's you what are... I was thinking of. You have got to work on your listening <laughs> skills. You have to be able to formulate thoughts and listen. I just did. How, I just formulated a thought. How 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 are you married? I yes, just you said listening. I I just said. What'd you say? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. I just said uh, uh, the new Mar the what if was uh yeah I don't know what I said but yeah uh, exactly because you you don't even listen to yourself yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like eh. at least Rob's here. At least he's listening. I'm tired of the um, fucking uh, the love story street. joke. We we ran it out. You didn't even we catch it. it in you the ground. Me with a blank face. I knew it was I'm coming. At, I, I I'm knew looking it. at your brother in the background. Some and he's laughing. fucking laughing his ass off. Subconsciously, like, I knew it was like, coming. This is Steve. I got Tucker Carlson face. <laughs> Anyway, um, but no, I did. I like the Doctor Strange episode. Um, but again, it was also like, oh, I destroyed a whole universe. We don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, was like, it, it didn't, it's just not impactful in any way. Yeah. Uh, but it, not that that's a terrible thing, but I wish they 
they didn't hinge everything on the MCU oh. and make everybody look like they're from the MCU. Like they could have done, you know, different looks on the characters and, and whatever, and done some really crazy shit, but it all, they're making everything tie in, which for good or for ill, uh, we'll see how that pans out. Um, but they're not horrible. Yeah. I mean, I still, am, no, I still, they're not. They're just, like they're I said, fun. they're just kind of middling. They're middling. That's this not anything that like, it, like Rob said, it's not must see TV. Yeah. Um, I didn't think that it would be though. I, I kind of just thought it'd be, you know, what it is. I, I never, yeah. uh, but I, yeah, I, I never thought it'd be better than the other shows that Dude, we'll say it's to talk to Keith. Keith loved the what if comics when he was growing up. And I wasn't as into him as he was. I read you know, a few here and there, and there they are. A lot of them are available on on Marvel Unlimited. Um, but a lot of them got fucking nuts, and it was I don't know. They were just, uh, I don't know. The, to me, the comics were just a little bit more enjoyable in that regard. And maybe if I go back and read them, maybe I won't feel the same way. But um, at the time, it was like, whoa, you know, like mm-hmm. holy shit, what would happen if Thanos got you know whatever? Uh, what if Galactus got the fucking ultimate nullifier yeah and, you know stuff like that yeah. um yeah so you're saying like w- why couldn't they do that they just didn't want to introduce new characters that we don't know about maybe they will we don't know it's like 20 some well, no, episodes I, right? I think they could have done that i think they chose to keep it mcu based like i think that was just a decision they made to keep it in the mcu not have new art styles um have the familiar actors in there as, as like a hook um yeah. i would have I would have gone a different way, but that's just me. Mm. So, but all right, you guys ready to wrap this up or what? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. That's my bedtime. I gotta go watch all the right, matrix so, trailer again. Um, all right. So ultimate Spider-Man one through six ish. Cause I don't know where the actual initial storyline ends or if there even is one. Cause Brian Michael Bendis and that dude is a decompressing motherfucker. You'll see what I mean when you start reading anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I got this week. All right, that's all I got. You got anything, Rob? Never. Rob's like, <laughs> Rob's like, I hate doing this. I hate coming here. I hate everything about. This. Hey, man, you got coffee? Like football started. I don't and... mind coming when there's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and remember, if you're if you're anti-abortion, don't fucking have one. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>